Hi. So usually when I talk about my home country, People's Republic of China, I go as humble as I can. I admit there's many problems that we currently have. We are fixing them, but could probably done a better job. But this day I saw this video talking about simplify Chinese characters. I'm kind of shocked over statements made since uh, they are both untrue and since and they are said in a way that I think is friendly trying to make people hate my country. So I'm making this video hoping to be as calm as I could but for disclosure I do feel angry toward these people as when I write the script. Yes, I'm reading a script. You can probably tell it's right there. I'm not even going to pretend I'm not. I cannot afford a teleprompter. Anyway, let's start. This video claims that the Chinese Communist Party, or Gong Chan Dang, created what they called simplified characters, or Jian Ti Zi. The party rewrote hundreds of characters, removing the deep inner meaning that was built into them. I understand they are trying to just get to the point, but it sounds like they owed it by themselves, which is kind of unfair to Japanese people's contribution and the KMT's contribution to making Chinese characters more accessible. They used to have like a 2000 character list. I'm pretty sure that's what we improved on. For example, the character love or I. The traditional writing system, the symbol for heart or xin is at the very center of the character. Makes sense, huh? But in the simplified writing system, the character for heart is removed. How can you love without a heart? Here's another one. This is the traditional character meaning to advance or jin. The traditional character is made of the character meaning to walk and the character that in ancient Chinese meant high and steep or lofty. So you walk forward to lofty heights. The simplified version is the character meaning to walk, but instead of walking to a good place, you walk into a well, a dark hole. Uh, what he did not say is the part we replace it with is a ca actually a very common character pronounced jing. So it, it's just intended to make the character more pronounceable. And despite he knows this and he do have the time, he didn't say was not in the favor of his opinion. I think this is kind of in intellectually dishonest. This is a terrible argument because good is pretty much just a subjective thing. People have shown in counter arguments that the simplified ones are just as good or even more meaningful aesthetics. You will find these as long as you keep looking. This is terrible also because the most audience, I presume, of this video speak English as their native language. They cannot make their own decisions. They have to trust you for the decision. They cannot reach their own conclusion. You see what I mean here? You don't give them a chance. You're just pushing your ideology onto them. So not only did many characters lose their deep inner meanings, but the new characters also cut Chinese people off from their history. Because the newer generations had only learned the simplified versions and made it harder for them to read classical or historical texts. The party could then provide edited versions of the classics and simplified characters and the average citizen is unable to tell the difference since they can't check against the original. Convenient if you want to control the worldview of your population. To suggest we have difficulties understanding traditional characters, therefore we cannot read the classical text. It's just really the opposite of truth. It's wrong on multiple levels. First is that normally I would insert a source here about Google for like two hours and cannot find one because apparently there's not a single case that uh, someone from mainland says they cannot speak traditional Chinese and presumably people doesn't even just doesn't even bother to do the survey or something. So yeah, we can read them. If you want to test this, go ask any Chinese person from mainland that's near you. I think there are plenty of them in Taiwan. Okay? So yeah, the reason of that is most people attribute it to being able to read characters next to it, since the vocabulary and grammar is actually pretty much similar. The book she used as example here is of course the word of Confucius, which existed about 2,500 years ago. They are books that's dedicated to explain books 
that's dedicated to explain Confucius words. And those books are about the same age as Anglo-Saxon English. So yeah, being able to read traditional Chinese actually doesn't make much of a difference. The, the whole thing is mainly kept alive because people have to take tests in them to become a government officer and things. So people kept using them. In fact, we are lucky that the Chinese characters even exist at all. The system of romanization in mainland China known as pinyin was originally intended to replace Chinese characters completely with English letters. It is true we wanted to replace Chinese characters with pinyin though, but this is no longer the case and pinyin is also adopted by ROC since 2009, so your face? What's the point of even bringing this up? Because you are making a video giving suggestions to whether or learn traditional or simplified, but they use the same pinyin, so... Uh, you, you did this just to make us look bad, right? But the system was too impractical due to the differences in pronunciation in different dialects across China. And this one actually came to a surprise to me. I didn't know about it and I had some fun researching it. So I don't know a lot of language but I do speak Japanese. I actually live in Japan right now. Katakana, they're one of their the sound system is used for Okinawan dialect, which is similar but cannot communicate with standard Japanese. They have their own pronunciations of kanjis, by the way, it's totally awesome. Katakana is also used on a different language spoken in Japan, the Ainu language. They both have some different symbol, but they are still distinctly, distinctively Katakana. I'm gonna say how pinyin works in China is kind of similar here. Uh, different dialects have their own pinyin systems. And I think this makes sense because they all have this relationship with each other. It's in the same language tree. You want some level of unison in pronouncing them. There are, of course, problems. Like, reality is just... yeah. If you are learning Chinese outside of mainland China, you are more likely to encounter traditional full-form characters than simplified. The majority of Chinese newspapers in the West use traditional characters, and so do Chinese restaurants in most Chinatowns. Taiwan and Hong Kong also use traditional characters. Yeah, sure, unless, of course, you are in Singapore, Indonesia, working with 50% of Chinese international student that's from mainland in your whatever university, you're working with the UN, or, yeah. And if you learn traditional Chinese in Taiwan and you went to Hong Kong, you're in for a surprise because they speak Cantonese, which actually have a small but crucial set of characters that's different. Cantonese have a different, I'm gonna say writing system, than Mandarin. They, they, they don't have the same grammar. That, that's the same. They, they, of course, they still use Chinese characters, but they don't have the same grammar. And even if you do travel to mainland China, only around 30% of the characters used in common writing are actually simplified. And this is just straight up bullshit. I have no idea where did you fetch this number, but if we can read, cannot read traditional Chinese and 70% are those, don't you think we are going to be in a big problem? Like not being able to read the signs. By the way, it's mandated by the law. You have to use simplified characters for the signs. So. You have to, yeah, but maybe you won't have any problems because they are pretty much the same thing. <clears throat> and you can verify this by yourself. Google does not have street wheel in China, but some Chinese companies does. Links in the duplicate do. You can go in, just watch, go to the streets of Beijing. You don't have to buy an expensive plane ticket, just, yeah. Just, just go to the place mm, and see for yourself whether the signs are simplified or traditional, okay? So if someone has learned traditional, it is normally not hard for them to read simplified texts. There are even scholars in China who are advocating a return to traditional Chinese characters. So study hard and you may be able to use your traditional characters in China in the future. That's our explanation for our use of traditional characters instead of simplified. But what do you think about the issue? Let us know in the comment section below and don't forget to subscribe for new videos every week.
the original video ends here. There are some additional points I would like to make though. This might come as a surprise to you, but traditional Chinese is not abandoned in mainland. They are still used to this day. For example, this is what I read for fun. You can see it right here. Uh, da, 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 da. And it's printed from Renmin University of China. It's printed in 2015. You can see here. See that thing? Can you read? You can read Chinese, right? But if, if you cannot, just take my word for it. You cannot uh, have your Chinese friend read it, whatever. Anyway, this is on enabled by the law is under article 2.17.5 of this long ass name law I'm going to yeah traditional Chinese characters may be used for education and research in this case this is a book about the historical phonology like how the historical pronunciation of Chinese character we don't know how to pr pronounce them but how we have done rough idea yeah. Anyway, there's also this mentality on um, like communists try to sever the band between us and the traditional culture. This is just oversimplification to the point it's no longer true. Our traditions have good and bad things in them. We need to think critically, like decide for ourselves rather than rejecting them completely or just hung on to them too much. And that's what's paid for in the education by what apparently is and according to this video an Orwellian government and that's why I won't stand for it so yeah why I made this video and the main justification for our simplification of Chinese characters as I said is to make Chinese more accessible easier to write easier to read and to to me, the only, actually, the only good criticism against the simplification is that there are several case merges, which is not even in this original video. That's to criticize Ugh, simplifications. Ugh. You really lack research. And anyway, here's a list of like the top 99% characters, all the merges appeared in them. I'm good. You can see most of them occur when there's two characters that look similar and they actually sound the same so the merge happens when that's the case. Uh, the problem happens when there are some characters that doesn't look the same or have the same meaning, they just have the same pronunciation and they are also merged and that results some of the embarrassing incidents. Which I'm going to post some pictures here, here and here I think. Yeah. At this point, I'm actually not sure whether it's ignorant or they are trying to push some political agenda to a naive audience. Ben is like a, a foreigner, like white guy. So I'm kind of leaning on a former. The girl probably just doesn't speak our language, she is forgiven. And, but the whole video really failed to represent simplified Chinese from a fair viewpoint. It is not well researched despite being an updated version. And uh, yeah, if you teach Chinese language and culture, it is, I find it unacceptable to mislead people that look up to you and trust you into irrational hate based on untruthful statements. It, and on this ground, Mr. Ben Hedges, I demand you to remove this video or annotate it in a way that, that people know what you said is not true. I'm pretty offended, you can see that, because I usually stay away from the us and them mentality, because it just... Ugh. Yeah. So feel free to call your friend and or send a counter-argument, of course. And that's the end of the video, thanks for watching, DFTBA! Captain Hindsight from the future here. So. I've been editing the video and I saw this supposed dialect maps of China. And this is really cringy for a linguistic nerd like me because uh, Hokkien is not actually a good... I, I don't talk about linguistic in English so maybe, I, I don't know, maybe everyone uses it. But uh, for me, it sounds like mean. That's what I would say because Hokkien also is the name of the province Hakka is in. And also, you didn't even include the best Chinese dialect of all time, all history. The Japanese people learn it, everyone learn it, the Nanjing dialect. 
and for a better dialect map of Chinese name. Just go to Wikipedia. God damn it. Like, it's free picture. You cannot, why can't you just use, just use a free picture? 